everyone and today we're going to be doing the AQA biology required practical on osmosis. So we are going to be looking at how potato cells take in or lose water when we add them into different concentrations of sugar solutions. You should already know that in osmosis if a solution has got more water in it than the potato the water will move from the surrounding solution into the potato, so the potato should get bigger. If, however, we put the potato in a solution which has got more concentrated sugar in, so in effect, the potato's got more water than the solution, then the water moves from the potato outwards, so the potato should get smaller. And it's this effect that we're gonna be investigating today. So the first thing you will need is some potato chips. You may be able to get some that are already cut using a potato chipper. You want them to be roughly the same size. So I have three here. They're all pretty much exactly the same size, which is good. Before I start my practical, I need to make sure that I pat them dry. And we need to measure the mass of each potato. So I have a little weighing beaker here. I will turn my balance on. And in turn, you weigh each of the potato masses and you note them down for later. Make sure that you know which potato chip is which. You don't want to say measure the mass of potato chip one, potato chip two, potato chip three, and then later get them mixed up. So make sure you know which potato chip is which. Once you have the masses, we can get the next step of our practical ready, which is to sort out our boiling tubes. I've got three. I'm going to be using three concentrations of sugar solution, or rather one of distilled water, one of 0.25 molar sugar solution and 1.5 molar sugar solution. Your boiling tubes, whenever you have a boiling tube, you should always label it to make sure you know what it is later. So I'm going to label one, distilled water. I'm going to label the next one, 0.25 m sugar. And the last one I'm going to label as 0.5 m sugar. If these were dangerous, I would also be writing on any hazards associated with it. Just make sure that when someone else looks at the text, test tubes next, they know what's inside them. We don't want anyone thinking it's pure water and then ending up with a face full of acid. So we always label our boiling tubes. Once I have my boiling tubes labelled, I'm ready to add whatever I've said goes in that tube. How much you put in depends on the size of your potato chips. You want an amount of liquid that's going to exactly cover your chip. I found that about 25 mils covers very nicely. I'm just going to take the top off of this. So I'm going to use 25 centimetres cubed of my liquids to cover my potato. It doesn't really matter how much you put in. It just matters that it's exactly the same for all of the test tubes. In any experiment, you want to keep all your variables the same. Well, the variable we're keeping the same right now is the amount of liquid. So I've added my distilled water. Next is my 0.25 ml sugar solution. I'm adding them in order of least concentrated to most concentrated. That way I know there's no spare sugar in here which is making the next ones more concentrated. If I was doing this practical properly I should really use three different measuring cylinders but I only have the one today. So in they go, 25ml of all three solutions. And now it's time to note down which chip you put into which solution. So I'm going to put my first potato chip into distilled water. Second one into 0.25 molar sugar. Next one into 0.5 molar sugar. You should have already worked out if this potato chip is in distilled water, it's going to gain mass probably. This one in 0.5 molar is probably going to lose mass. In the distilled water, there'll be more water outside than in the potato, so the water will go inwards, the potato chip's gonna get bigger. In 0.5, more water inside the potato, so probably the water's gonna go out, and my potato will get smaller. I did do one earlier. 
This one has been sitting overnight. I wouldn't leave your potato chips for longer than about 48 hours because they can start to go a bit mouldy. These ones have been left for about 24 hours. Um, the distilled water one is a lot bigger now than the 0.5 molar. They did start off the same size. So my distilled water one has indeed gained mass. My 0.5 has lost mass. When I take them out, I've already tipped the water out. You can just tip your potato chip onto some um, blue paper towel and then we pat it dry gently. We don't want to squeeze out any water that's in there, but we don't want to be measuring the mass of any water that's trapped on the surface. So we'll just pat it off and then we will measure the mass again and note it down. I now have the start mass and the end mass. When I've done that for all my potato chips, I will be able to draw a graph of change in mass. And it should look a little bit like this. Now, obviously this one I've done with pen, which you shouldn't be doing, you should be using a pencil. But for ease of you being able to see it, I have done it in pen. So you can see um, I've done up the side percentage change in mass. So I've calculated by how much percent the potato has uh, gained or lost mass. And here I've got concentration of sugar solution. Like I said, it doesn't matter what concentration you do. I've done three. You could do ten. Doesn't really matter. As long as you have a range, that's fine. So on this graph, I have got naught, which is distilled water, all the way up to 0.6 molar sugar solution. You can see that when I use distilled water, it increased by 70%. And when I use my 0.6 molar, it's decreased by 50%. How you use this graph, you can see that the line crosses that axis here. That means that at this concentration, which is about 0.35 molar, water neither entered nor left the potato. In effect, the potato and the sugar solution have not exchanged water. So I can tell, therefore, that the concentration of my potato is 0.35 because that's the concentration where no water went in and no water went out. The concentration of the potato must have been the same as the concentration of the solution. So that's it for this practical. Um, very simple. All you have to do, measure the mass of the potato at the beginning, pop them in some different sugar solutions, measure the masses at the end and draw your graph. From the graph, we can work out what concentrations did water enter, what concentrations did water leave, and therefore, what was the concentration of the potato? Thank you very much for listening.